Ukraine, Ukraine. Mr. Kuleba. Uh, Minister, uh, could you say, please, what was the general discussion today? And in particular, have you discussed uh, the issue of the Russian uh, build up, uh, military build up on the borders of Ukraine? Well, uh, one of the main purposes of my visit to Brussels is to brief our EU partners and friends about the security situation along the border between Russia and Ukraine, including its uncontrolled part, and also in the occupied territories of Ukraine, in Crimea and Donbas. So I started the day with my fellow EU ministers, uh, discussing, briefing them on recent security developments. And my main message to them was very simple. We should not see uh, Russia's military buildup and aggressive intentions towards Ukraine in isolation from other elements of Russian strategy in Europe, which are artificial migrant crisis on the border with Poland and Lithuania, uh, increased using gas as a weapon in the European Union, and large and very concentrated disinformation campaigns in EU countries to sow divisions uh, between in, inside of inside of the societies and also between societies and governments so these are all parts of one strategy and we should address it and deter Russia in a complex comprehensive way what was the um, the outcome the response from the ministers what was the atmosphere of the discussion well uh, first of all uh, I would like to thank uh, Minister Rao for organizing this early bird meeting uh, ministers showed up, uh, they all uh, expressed full support and solidarity with Ukraine. W I proposed a number of steps the European Union can take to uh, offer practical support to Ukraine and a clear message to Russia. Uh, my, me my, uh, my request was very simple. I said, dear colleagues, uh, we can and should do political communication so that Russia sees that you understand what's happening. But the best message you can send is action. And even if you start preparing actions like uh, uh, restrictive, new restrictive measures against Russia, this will be a message to them that if they decide to uh, move forward, uh, you will be immediately ready to, to uh, introduce to take decisions which will make costs of Russian aggression unbearable. So okay. these steps that you are talking about, this is uh, sanctions first of all and then? Uh, well, first, first uh, it's about uh, sanctions. Second, it's about uh, providing Ukraine with, su with support necessary for us to be stronger, and the European Union is not a military alliance, but there are plenty of things which EU can do, can still do, because I'm afraid that uh, Russia got used to hearing words. Uh, what it hopes for is that Europe will not be able to move from words to deeds, and I think it's in the best interest of the European Union to prove Russia wrong, to demonstrate that the European Union can act if circumstances require so. We are facing the migrant crisis on the eastern part of the Union. How secure is the border between Belarus and Ukraine? And do you see a threat uh, as a, you know, to open a new migrant road towards, uh, towards the, the, that border? On Sunday, Ukrainian uh, security and defense leadership gathered in the city of Lutsk, uh, it's the region bordering Belarus, and they invited ambassadors of Poland and Lithuania to join them because we need a collective response to Belarus. Today we are talking, we are all overwhelmed and focused on uh, the artificial uh, migrant crisis, but you don't know what will happen tomorrow. And three, our countries should handle the migrant crisis today, keeping in mind that this is, will not be the end of the story. They, the, the Belarus will come up and Russia will come up with something new tomorrow, and three of us should be ready for any scenario. <clears throat> Ukraine is now reinforcing its border with Belarus. Uh, so far, we haven't seen a flow of migrants towards uh, our country, which demonstrates that, uh, which once again proves that this is a hand, handmade uh, crisis targeted directly at Poland and Lithuania, an attempt to provoke you, to put pressure on you, uh, to sow division 
divisions inside of your societies on how this crisis should be handled. Uh, but uh, again, um, while handling today's crisis, we have to think about tomorrow. This is not the end of the story. Do you think that uh, Ukraine could be attractive for migrants? And do you think that uh, it could be a large problem for Ukraine? Uh, I mean, uh, migrant no, crisis. No, in, in this uh, in this in this very context, uh, Poland and potentially Ukraine, uh, they are not attractive as desti final destination points for migrants. But they are attractive countries for putting pressure on us for creating this instability and using our countries as transit points for uh, further movement of migrants deeper into the EU. So if, it come, if, we, if we theoretically speak about Ukraine, of course for us uh, they will tell migrants cross through Ukraine and enter the European Union. Uh, when it comes to Poland, they're saying uh, cross into Poland and move to Germany because Germany is your final destination point. So our situations are very similar in that sense. We are not uh, the purpose of this crisis is not to make our countries accept more migrants. The purpose of this crisis is to put pressure on us, to create instability, and to use us as a transit countries for further for movement for the for, for the further movement of migrants.